All right, I've just finished saying that it's really important for us to be able to engineer materials that either have excess electrons, n-type, or excess holes, excess holes, p-type. How do you know how many electrons or holes you have? You tried to dope it, but how do you know you actually how many how do you know how many you actually ended up with? And how do you know what the carrier concentration is under different temperatures or anything like that? You need to do something called a Hall measurement. A Hall measurement is actually pretty amazing. Here's how it works. You take your sample, that's this purple material here, and you hook it up to a power source. So a battery, a power supply, whatever. We know what that's going to do. It's going to cause an electrical current to travel through your material, right? So your electrons, if the current is going in this picture counterclockwise, then your current, uh, then your electrons are traveling clockwise, right? They're going opposite the direction of the electrical current. So you've got electrons traveling from the bottom of this upwards towards the top. Now what you do is across your sample perpendicular to it, so if this is your sample perpendicular to it, you apply a magnetic field. That magnetic field, if it's, let's say it's pointing up here, what that's going to do is you have a charged particle moving in a magnetic field. You learned about this in physics. This is going to exert a Lorentz force on your particle, right? Lorentz force says that if the current's going this direction, the direction of my thumb, the magnetic field's going that way, then your particle will experience a force in that direction, right? This right-hand rule. So in this picture, what that means is that the current's going that way and your field is going straight up. Your electron will get moved. It's going to get moved to this direction. It's going to get moved to that side of your sample. So if you have a buildup of electrons on this charge of, on this side of your material and you measured the electrical charge across your material from one side to the other, that means you got a positive charge over here, you would measure a voltage, right? Which is kind of crazy to think about. You you applied a voltage in one direction and then orthogonal to that, you're measuring another voltage. We call that voltage the Hall voltage, right? The Hall voltage. And the Hall voltage, we know how to calculate it. It's equal to the Hall coefficient, RH, multiplied by our current times the magnetic field and divided by the thickness, T, of your sample, right? If you know all those things, uh, then you could, you know, this, you'd be able to calculate your Hall voltage. What's cool is that we know that RH, the Hall coefficient, is equal to one divided by the number of carriers times their charge. So this is pretty great because in this relatively straightforward setup, we can measure the Hall voltage. And from the Hall voltage, if you know how thick your sample was and the strength of your magnetic field and that, you can then calculate your Hall coefficient. And from your Hall coefficient, you can calculate your N, your carrier concentration. And what's even cooler is the sign of your Hall voltage here, whether it's negative or positive, depending on which one it is. That will tell us whether your carriers in your material, right, in this purple material, what was the electrical carriers? Were they primarily holes or was it primarily electrons? And uh, so this is how you know whether your material is N-type or P-type and what your carrier concentration is. So this is a very useful measurement. And obviously, uh, you can actually calculate your conductivity as just the mobility divided by the Hall coefficient because we know that the Hall coefficient itself is equal to 1 divided by n times the charge of your electron. But conductivity, we've been calculating in this chapter as the number of carriers you have times their charge times their mobility. So all they did is a substitution to get that expression. So that is the Hall measurement. Very useful to figure out n-type, p-type, and how many carriers are we talking about.